The next business is the election of a speaker. I call the honourable member for Karangamite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Clark, it's uh, my great privilege to uh, nominate uh, David Hawker, the member for Wannan, as the uh, new speaker for the 41st Parliament. Uh, yeah. As members would be aware, uh, David Hawker has represented the seat of Wannan for 21 years. He first joined this parliament in 1983 uh, upon the uh, by-election caused by the retirement uh, of the former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. By way of history, the uh, former Prime Minister uh, was a member for Wannan for 28 years. He uh, won the election in 1955, having lost the election, I think, in 1952 by a handful of votes. So the former Prime Minister understood the reality of uh, winning the last few votes, even down in Wannan, uh, where it is now a safer seat under the, uh, uh, under the uh, member for Wannan, uh, David Hawker. So that uh, we have a situation where uh, the former Prime Minister, Malcolm Fraser, uh, David Hawker, have represented the seat of Wannan for 49 years. I would just remind the House that uh, the centre of political gravity is now moving to Western Victoria for these few fleeting moments. Uh, because uh, uh, the member for Karangamite will, will be escorting the, uh, uh, the new speaker, uh, supported by the member for Mallee, and so that uh, ensures that this parliament understands uh, where the real political decision will be made in the next uh, few moments. <laughs> Mr Clark, by way of political uh, historical perspective, could I just say that former Speaker Neil Andrew uh, joined this parliament as a member for Wakefield in 1983. Uh, David Hawker joined this parliament as a member for Wannan in the by-election, I said, in 1983. And the member for Karangamite, Stuart MacArthur, joined this parliament in February 1984 as the member for Karangamite. We became very good friends uh, in the ensuing years, uh, as friends are sometimes hard to find in this parliament, as some members would know. Uh, we spent. <laughs> We, uh, uh, the three of us spent 13 long years in opposition, and during that time we became uh, quite uh, well versed in electing leaders of, op of, of, of the opposition. Um, <laughs> so we learnt a lot about uh, uh, politics, we learnt a lot about the parliament as three good friends on the opposition benches during those 13 long years in opposition. We would hope that uh, those members of the opposition will stay on the opposition benches for a longer period of time. <laughs> but I say uh, David Hawker is a very good local member for Wannan. It uh, encompasses a number of uh, regional cities and uh, towns. Uh, he claims that Hamilton, the centre of Wannan, is the wool capital of the world. Some of us would challenge that particular view. Uh, Warnable, Ararat and many other smaller towns around Wannan. Uh, as members would know on both sides, in these bigger rural electorates, the electors think you have to be everywhere all the time. And David Hawker has been very much an outstanding local member. He has been everywhere. He has been serving the people and he's done an outstanding job, job being their representative. He's even represented my hometown of Camperdown in quite a good, uh, good manner, although I am really the de facto member of that particular town. <laughs> Some of, you, uh, some of you may not recall that David Hawker in the middle 1980s uh, was an advocate for the free market of domestic wheat. Now, some of you may think that is a fairly difficult topic, but it was the advocacy of David Hawker that, uh, with the assistance of the then government, uh, that freed up the domestic wheat market, and that was a very big debate, and David Hawker was uh, the number one advocate on the opposition side and I put on the record his uh, remarkable contribution to that quite, uh, at times, acrimonious debate. David Hawker, as chairman of the uh, uh, House of Representatives Finance Committee, has brought the Reserve Bank and the Reserve Bank Governor to the Parliament and to the Australian people. And that has exposed that very important 
uh, policy making group to uh, the open parliamentary debate. David Hawker has had the experience of the uh, speaker's panel and uh, he comes to the speaker's job with that, uh, that amount of experience. David Hawker, by any measure, is a fair and honourable man. And uh, he is supported very strongly by his wife Penny, who's here in the chamber, along with his uh, family. And I think this is a very historic moment for David Hawker, who's uh, spent uh, so many years here in the parliament and so many years uh, representing uh, uh, the seat of Wannan and representing uh, his people here in the parliament. So it's my very great pleasure, on behalf of all members, uh, to propose uh, David Hawker be the uh, Speaker of the, uh, the House of Representatives in the 41st Parliament. It is my uncomfortable duty to remind the House that it is strictly not in order to speak in favour of the candidates unless the election is contested. Um, <laughs> is the... Is the motion seconded? I call the honourable member for Mallee. I hear in your injunction, Clark, but it is a great honour and my privilege to second the motion. I'd like the Chamber to recall the fact that in the motion moved by the member for Karangamite, supported by the member for Mallee, the two nearest electoral neighbours to the member for Wannan. And I think that's a very important um, aspect of today, where, as the member for Karangamite says, the significance of this region of Victoria. It's a great honour. He's an honourable man. I'm looking forward now to um, continuing order in this place under the stewardship of this candidate. Thank you. Does the honourable member for Wannan accept the nomination? With some reluctance. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, there any further, is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired and I declare that the honourable member proposed, Mr Hawker, has been elected as Speaker. I wish to express my grateful thanks for the high honour that the House has chosen to confer on me today. Mr uh, Speaker, may I, uh, on behalf of the government and I know on behalf of all members of the House and indeed a, a wider community of people interested in and concerned about the operation of government in this country, extend to you uh, my very warm congratulations. You are a person who has served the people of Wannan with great commitment uh, since uh, you were elected in a by-election early in 1983. Uh, you have been uh, a very good steward of interests inside your party. Uh, you're a person who is warmly regarded on a personal basis by all of your colleagues in the Liberal and National parties, and I believe that that uh, sentiment is shared across the chamber. Uh, the reality of political life is that over a period of time, people who are in this house for a long number of years, uh, uh, some uh, develop friendships and respect on both sides, some don't. You belong to the former category uh, of somebody who has developed friendships and respect on both sides of the House. Uh, the role that you now assume is a role that requires um, uh, the House in your own uh, words, and they've been used before, but they're nonetheless uh, appropriate that you be firm but fair. Uh, that will be the expectation of the government. Uh, parliament is a place for both government and oppositions. Parliament is a place where there should be robust debate, there should be 
robust debate in the Australian tradition, but there should also be intelligent debate and there should also be a measure of discipline consistent with the uh, proper exchange of ideas uh, so that this chamber is uh, representative of Australian democracy. All of us have a responsibility to ensure that the repute of parliament is as high as possible. Uh, I think um, the uh, quality of people who come into this place is very high. In my experience of just over 30 years, I've found that most people who come into this place on both sides come into it with a desire to improve things with very strong views and very strong values. Some leave a mark, some don't. Uh, we all, though, have a joint responsibility to elevate as much as we can the repute of this place because, in the end, uh, this place, this chamber, along with the Senate, uh, is uh, the ultimate guarantor of democracy and the sort of way of life that we believe in. And uh, I said to the newly elected members of the, the Liberal Party uh, in our uh, party gathering yesterday that uh, today uh, was a very special moment in their lives as it is in the lives of, of new members on the other side and can I take the opportunity of welcoming all new members. Uh, in the just over 100 years of the Federation of the Australian Commonwealth, uh, a relatively small number, numbered in the hundreds, have had the privilege and honour of sitting in this place and to be a member of the National Parliament of Australia itself is an incredible honour and one that should be treasured, whatever your political views are and whatever your sentiments are about the issues that come to be debated here. And to, may I particularly say to all of the new members, you'll never forget this day. It's a very important day. It's the culmination in many cases of a lot of hard work, not just during your election campaigns, but in many cases uh, over years. I've never forgotten my first day in Parliament and uh, I know that those who come here today will never forget their first day in Parliament. It is a real honour. I've, every day I'm in this place I regard it as an honour. And uh, for you, uh, Mr Speaker, I know it is a great moment of legitimate personal satisfaction uh, and you have a right to feel pleased and satisfied. I know you will do your job with great commitment and great fairness. Can I extend to you and to your wife Penny and the other members uh, of your family uh, my very good personal wishes. You will have the total support of the government in the discharge of your responsibilities and I know that you assume them with the great goodwill and the great respect of all members of this chamber. Thank you. The Leader of the Opposition. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. I join with the Prime Minister in conveying my congratulations and those of the Australian Labor Party to you on your elevation to the chair. Uh, we know you well on this side of the House from your long service in the chamber. I in particular know you well from your uh, chairmanship of the House Committee on Finance, uh, Banking and Public Administration. Uh, you always took a cooperative and common sense approach that was admired by all the members of the committee on both sides of politics. Uh, you achieved a degree of bipartisanship uh, in your role as uh, chair of that committee that uh, does you great credit. It wasn't always an easy committee to chair. I remember the member for Warringah used to fire it up in the mid-90s in the grilling of the Reserve Bank governor. But uh, from post-1996, you achieved that level of consensus that was much admired around the committee table. Uh, you are well known and respected across the parliament, as the Prime Minister pointed out. Uh, you come from a distinguished Victorian constituency that's now returned a Liberal Party Prime Minister and also a Liberal Party Speaker in the House of Representatives. On this side of the chamber, we welcome the result of the Liberal Party room ballot, uh, not least of all because we can still hear points of order from the member for McKellar on the other side of the chamber. Uh, from our perspective, we've got two for the price of one. We've got a Liberal Party speaker and uh, his shadow just sitting right over there ready to point out how things can be usefully improved in the House at any time. Uh, I, of course, uh, tried to help the member for McKellar by endorsing publicly the person who I thought was her main opponent, the member for Cook. Uh, but, uh, Mr Speaker, as just a reminder, you should be thankful I said nothing good about you prior to the ballot. Uh, I kept my comments uh, to this uh, particular forum now after your installation in the chair. 
Uh, you've also broken the Liberal Party mould. In 1996, the Prime Minister told us and the Australian people we'd have an independent speaker in this chamber, and he proceeded to install those that had been Liberal Party chief whips, the former members for Casey and Wakefield. Well, you haven't been a former chief whip. I think you served as a deputy whip for a number of years in opposition. Uh, we also trust that you maintain an interest, uh, the interest in parliamentary reform demonstrated by your immediate predecessor, Neil Andrew. Uh, he was keen on higher standards in the chamber. As the Prime Minister pointed out, that's important. As a reform bad boy myself, I can assure you all the cooperation <laughs> and support and discipline that's needed to ensure that we bring the highest uh, possible parliamentary standards here. And of course, you'll have the support of Labor Party members in that vital task. Uh, we believe in the primacy of the parliament over the executive government. We believe in reversing the trend of recent times where the role of the parliament has been downgraded. Uh, we believe that the uh, independence of the speaker is fundamental to that important task in the interests of the Australian people. We say that the speaker shouldn't be a political appointment. Uh, we say it should be a role beyond politics, an independent speaker, and we've outlined uh, previously uh, under the member for Hotham and also myself how that independence can be achieved, alternating between Labor Party and coalition members is the member for McKellar Keane on the role of an independent speaker. We're glad to hear that and uh, we'd be glad to support your independence in the future if at any time you choose to uh, leave the party room and uh, remain free of partisan uh, politics in this forum. We've also suggested on our side of the chamber useful parliamentary reforms such as time limits on questions and answers, uh, supplementary questions which were entertained by Speaker Halverson uh, for many years, and we look forward to your uh, consideration of these parliamentary reforms under your banner of firm but fair. The fairness, of course, is to ensure that the opposition gets a fair go and the supplementary questions and other reforms we've suggested can play a useful role in that respect. We know that you'll be true to your high hopes and promise in this new and important role. Uh, I conclude with the words of the person who thoroughly defined the role of the Speaker in the Westminster system, Speaker Lenthal. When Speaker Lenthal sat in the House of Commons and came under the harassment of the King's men and was asked to do dob in some of his colleagues, he replied, I have neither eyes to see nor mouth to speak nor ears to hear except as the Parliament directs me. He was firm but fair to all members of parliament. He put the primacy of the parliament above all other considerations. So, Mr Speaker, we look forward to your role in the chair with the sense of fairness and openness that we need as members of the House of Representatives, as representatives of the people, to serve our constituents, to return the great trust and honour that they've placed in us at the recent elections. Uh, I join with the Prime Minister in conveying my congratulations to all the new members here. It is in indeed a great honour uh, to serve in the House of Representatives, to be elected by the Australian people in this great democratic forum. Uh, it is an honour that nobody ever forgets. It's an honour that nobody should take lightly. It's an honour we all hope to discharge in the current parliamentary term as well as we can. Of course, under your guidance in this chamber, with parliamentary reform, with a sense of fairness, with a sense of service for the great Australian people. So congratulations, David. We very much look forward to working with you. Uh, the Deputy Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm delighted to join with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition in congratulating you, in wishing you well in the role, in saying to you that over the 16 years that I've known you uh, and uh, have had uh, many times the opportunity to be with you in your electorate and in this place, uh, those views expressed uh, uh, by the member for Karangamite and uh, the member for Mali are absolutely right. A uh, very hard-working local member, respected for your decency. Uh, and I know that you will bring forward that quality in the very important role now uh, given to you. I know that you will recognise the importance of allowing robust debate in this place. We ought not to be squirmish about robust debate. It would be a great shame if the people who were elected to this place did not believe in and have a passion for uh, their views on how better to advance the country. The point is that, of course, that, that uh, robust debate should be conducted in a way uh, that does not spill over into personal abuse uh, or a lack of respect for others. And I know by your demeanour, by your personal qualities, that you'll be keen to ensure uh, that the House is conducted uh, along lines that, that respect uh, those, uh, those points. I join with the Prime Minister in particular in uh, 
wishing both you well in this role, but also acknowledging that it's a partnership. Penny is here with you today, I understand, and uh, we extend our best wishes to her and to her family. I also join with the Prime Minister in welcoming new members. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that in the 104 years or so since we became a nation, uh, only a tad over a thousand people have served in this parliament, which is remarkable in 104 years. Uh, we are indeed privileged, uh, few in number, uh, but we bear a great responsibility, I think, as an extension of that privilege, and we ought to be mindful of it. So, Mr Speaker, again, I wish you well, uh, and as a wheat grower, I think actually on the domestic uh, deregulation in the 1980s, uh, we had it right. <laughs> uh, the Honourable Member for Calair. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Mr um, uh, Speaker, and uh, on behalf of the uh, crossbenchers and the independents, I'd like to uh, congratulate you for your your uh, rise to such uh, an honourable position. I just, uh, with, no, uh, with no comment at all on uh, your capabilities, which I'm sure will, uh, will honour this place, I would just uh, wonder whether or not it might be preferable in, uh, in future parliaments to allow the parliament to be the first receiver of the news of the nomination of the, uh, of the choice from the governing side, rather than it be announced to the uh, the media the night before, because it does make uh, something of a nonsense of the protocol or the constitutional requirement that the, uh, the parliament indeed uh, elect a speaker uh, to this place. Now, on behalf of the uh, member for New England and the uh, member for uh, uh, Kennedy, who unfortunately he, uh, he's out uh, whipping up some new candidates for the next election, but uh, he. He is, uh, he is indisposed. I'm not quite sure what, his, uh, what the problem is, and if he is not well, we, I'm, sure all members, I'm sure all members wish uh, uh, Mr Catter uh, the best of health. But um, might I say that I endorse the comments of the Leader of the Opposition, particularly around uh, investigating time limits on questions. Uh, indeed, uh, I think the idea of the supplementary question, when we look at the other place and the way that they conduct uh, their question time, is, uh, is an object lesson to what I believe should occur here. And I ask you uh, to be uh, mindful of when the questions are asked uh, about alternative uh, policies, that it not be used for a, uh, uh, a free go for a ministerial statement that should be directed. Uh, and delivered, delivered in, another, uh, in another part of the parliamentary forum. And in saying that, can I uh, just correct some of the grammar I hear around here about uh, the word alternate is used instead of alternative? And if we had alternate policies, it would be a very interesting place. Uh, the Honourable the Treasurer. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, uh, may I add my congratulations to you on a thoroughly deserved uh, appointment and a unanimous uh, appointment uh, here, uh, here today. Uh, you have been, uh, as has been remarked, somebody who has been marked by decency uh, throughout the whole of your political yeah, career. Yeah. And I was uh, very intrigued when I heard the member for Karangamite uh, talk that there had only been two members for one and in essentially the last 50 years. I can remember you telling me about uh, one of your elections in a small country town I think there were about 70 or 80 voters. They were nearly all agricultural producers, and there was a school. And uh, each year a teacher would be sent down from Melbourne to do their first year of teaching. And I think uh, in the general election, out of the 80 registered voters, you got 79. And uh, the locals were upset that you only got 79 this time and refused to speak to the teacher for the next two years. <laughs> But it's, it's been uh, one of those electorates which I believe has been exceptionally well served by you. Uh, you have, on the Economics and Banking Committee, I think established a new role. Uh, when we came to government uh, and when it was uh, formalised for testimony of the Reserve Bank Governor, uh, uh, you were the person that presided over making that institution transparent and I think you did it with um, decency which gave you bipartisan respect. And I think you bring all of those qualities uh, to the speakership. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, uh, the parliament will function best when, uh, when the speaker is able to 
uh, preserve a low visibility uh, in a way which will preserve the functions of questions, answers and accountability. And we have uh, great confidence by reason of your experience and your personality that you will be uh, very well fitted to do that. To Penny and to the family um, who are here today, uh, this is a very proud moment for you as well as uh, for the Honourable the Member for Wannan, and I add my congratulations to your appointment. Thank you. Uh, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. If I uh, too could add my uh, congratulations to you, Mr Speaker. I know uh, on many occasions uh, we have uh, good reason uh, to give uh, uh, the government uh, a hard time, and certainly uh, on the election uh, of the government, if I can just say uh, congratulations to the Prime Minister and um, uh, to the government, as well as, of course, adding my congratulations to all of the new members. Uh, one of the uh, most important tasks of any opposition, of course, is to hold the government accountable. Uh, we certainly do intend to do that. We intend to do it with vigour. And of course, uh, one of the things that so many people have already spoken about uh, uh, when uh, uh, remarking on your qualities is uh, your uh, uh, your demeanour, your way, the way in which uh, you do uh, intend to be uh, fair, the way in which you've carried yourself uh, since you've been in this parliament. And certainly, as we work uh, very hard to hold the government accountable, we, we will be uh, looking very uh, much to you to, uh, to maintain that fairness uh, so that we can do the job that we have been given here in this parliament. Well, can I again thank all honourable members for this great honour. And it is also, um, I think, something that uh, I'd like to express my sincere thanks, first of all, to the member for Karangamite uh, for his very kind words. And yes, it's true that um, Wannan did extend into Camperdown and he still has great difficulty in uh, recognising where the boundary is, I think. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, uh, I've certainly appreciated uh, his support and friendship over many years and uh, his always very frank comments. Could I also thank the Honourable Member for Mallee for his support, uh, which is much more than just today, and uh, we have certainly worked together on many common issues, and uh, I think it's something that uh, I've appreciated over many years. I'd like to thank the Honourable Prime Minister for his very kind words, and uh, again, I certainly appreciate uh, the way they were put and uh, the expression of them. To the Leader of the Opposition, again, thank you. And yes, we have worked together on uh, the Economics Committee and uh, I've certainly appreciated uh, the contribution that you've made to that committee. And I think uh, all honourable members should know that I think it was a good example of how a committee could work together with members of both government and opposition yeah. and achieve some constructive outcomes. I'd like to also thank the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition and the Treasurer for their kind remarks and I think the uh, sentiments that were expressed around that uh, certainly uh, give me great encouragement. I'd also like to thank the many colleagues and friends from both sides who have congratulated me uh, in anticipation of this moment and if I could say to the Honourable Member for Calaire that um, some of the points that he raised I think are probably, first of all, for consideration, and secondly, probably should, should be considered by uh, the parliament itself, not just uh, by the speaker. I'd also like to pay tribute to the former member for Wakefield, the Honourable Neil Andrew, for six years of very conscientious <coughs> effort to uphold the dignity, the impartiality, and the standing of the office of speaker and also of the House. <laughs> Along with Neil, and the member for Gippsland, um, the three of us were the lonely coalition class of 1983, shortly, as we've already heard, to be joined by the member for Krangamite, uh, to the uh, Labor class of 2004. I think we can relate to some of your feelings. I'd also like to uh, thank my wife, Penny, and our family, uh, three of our four children and one grandchild, uh, and uh, father of the grandchild uh, here today, and I thank them for their very strong support over the many, many years and uh, for their encouragement uh, to continue uh, 
as the member for Wannan. I am mindful that the electors of Wannan have held high expectations, given that the previous member for Wannan, as was mentioned, was the former Prime Minister, the Honourable Malcolm Fraser, and uh, I believe that my elevation today uh, I will be seen as in some way reward for their ongoing loyal support. I'm also mindful of my own family's commitment to parliamentary public life before me, which includes another member for Wakefield, my late cousin, the Honourable Charles Hawker, and before that, the elevation to Speaker in the South Australian Parliament in 1860 of my great-grandfather, the Honourable George Hawker. And I've seen reports that George Hawker was considered courteous and fair. I hope I can continue the style. On the opening today of the 41st Parliament, can I congratulate, congratulate all members on their election or re-election, as the case may be? And as the Prime Minister has pointed out, it is indeed a great privilege and an honour to serve in the National Parliament, and I'm sure all members will find it and continue to find it very rewarding. As we debate the issues of national importance, we should never forget that the things that unite us are far greater than the things that divide us. And as parliamentarians, we should be mindful, as has been said, of the, that the eyes of the nation are on us as we strive to make ours a better country. We all have a duty and a responsibility to repay the trust of, of our citizens by discharging in a way worthy of respect. Again, I thank and assure all members from both sides that I will do my utmost to facilitate this through the honour you have given me today. And finally, can I just say that my door is always open. Thank you. The Honourable the Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr Speaker, I have ascertained that it will be His Excellency the Governor-General's pleasure to receive you, Mr Speaker, in the Members' Hall immediately after the resumption of sittings at 2.30 p.m. this day. Uh, prior to my presentation of it to His Excellency this afternoon, the bells will ring for five minutes so that honourable members may attend in the chamber and accompany me to the Members' Hall, where, when they may, if they so wish, be introduced to His Excellency. The sitting is now suspended until 2.30.